Pat 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 Magrat! Pat Magrat! Pat Magrat! Pat Magrat! Pat Magra Pat Magra Pat Magra Pat Magra <laughs> Hello gorgeous beautiful stars <laughs> Paris Star Channel here with a new and possibly a very exciting episode guys because let me just show you. I hope it's not going to fly over because this is luxurious. <laughs> Ta-da! Pat McGrath. Yes, guys. Pat McGrath. Oh, it, this is this is just wants to let go. This wants to go. Anyway, guys, Pat McGrath has arrived and is ready to be tested. And I think we have everything or even more than enough. We have foundation, we have concealer, we have powders, we have blushes, highlighters. We don't have bronzers because they haven't arrived yet. <laughs> they never arrive when they should. <laughs> We're waiting. So we're going to have another episode well, with the bronzers because yeah, <laughs> they're not present. But then we have some eyeshadows as well. So yes, guys, we're going to play with the makeup from Pat McGrath. So yes, guys, if this is something that interests you, please tune in to my channel, to the party where we celebrate diversity. Diversity makes us all different, gorgeous, unique and beautiful. <laughs> so guys, yes, let's start today's episode. And today's episode, the star is... All about huh? <laughs> Pat McGrath. <laughs> All right, guys, and so here we are ready to play with makeup, luxurious makeup from Pat McGrath. We are this episode might be a little bit spicy because. Um, I don't know how you, but my experience with Pat McGrath <laughs> could definitely improve, let's just say. So this episode might be a little bit spicy because, well, <laughs> you'll see. You'll see when I'm going to talk about the product and my own experience while shopping in Pat McGrath. And as I've mentioned uh, just in a second, you probably heard it, the browsers, they haven't yet arrived. They're somewhere stuck in Europe, and I don't know where are they, and everyone is like, eh, whatever. <laughs> so yeah, that is always my experience as a customer of, of Pat McGrath. It is supposed to be a luxurious brand. Do I feel any luxury? <sighs> Probably not. <laughs> but yes, guys, okay. So, um, just a little disclaimer. 
uh, of course, we are testing the products. We are playing with makeup. We are having fun with makeup because makeup is fun. So obviously the success of the test depends on the condition of my skin. And I take a lot of care about my skin. I've just had an, uh, a night with acids. So my skin is beautifully exfoliated, new and fresh. And this is like 50% 50 50 of the success when it comes to test for the products. So I would like to mention that because um, I think it is a very important thing to say. Good, enough about talking, let's jump directly into the subject. And the first product that I would like to talk about would be this one, guys, Pat. McGrath loves skin fetish. Skin fetish. Hmm. Original. Um, Sublime Perfection Foundation from the town. And mine is in the shade. Don't know if you can see it. Maybe now you can see it. Now I can see it. Light 3. This is how the product looks like. And... When it comes to packaging, definitely it is a very interesting packaging. And so, yes, guys, I suppose let's let's unbox this little thing and see how it looks like from inside. I mean, I mean, okay, guys. I mean, wow. Okay, <laughs> this this makes a huge impression. The box in here, it's kind of like made. It's matte. I can definitely see the quality. And when you open it, you see a cap, and then. <laughs> okay. Wow. Okay. Wow. Uh, wow, okay. <laughs> I mean, there might be lots of wows and lots of okays, but um, I am impressed. This is glass, a very kind of like heavy glass. It is um, frosted. The sticker right in here, absolutely wonderful. Even the cap, it's kind of like glossy with gold and I am absolutely mad when it comes to connection gold with a black or gold with white. I think personally these are the best connections and yes, um, I don't know. It's, it's actually quite funny because on the videos, the cameras, they're showing things differently. I think when it comes to sizes, this bottle is not really that big as you want you might think i think the size is is just about right and then a gold pump and the foundation good guys but before we going to actually apply the makeup let's uh, let's talk a little bit about this this foundation and first let's have a swatch and see if this foundation is going to be oxidizing although as far as i know and i have discovered that the process of the oxidation is personal it's individual and apparently on every person this process might be different nonetheless i am very curious if this foundation is going to oxidize so let's see this shade light three if it's going to change or oxidize on me I think it is shook, definitely. It is very liquidy. And yes, guys, it's time to squeeze the foundation and see the shade. I am actually very anxious. Have I chosen the right one? I'm still a little bit white, but we'll see. We'll see. Good. <gasps> oh, my gosh. 
Oh, oh, oh my gosh. It is really very liquidy. It's like I'm even... Oh, look at how... <gasps> this is very liquidy. Good. Okay. I am very surprised. Maybe I should shook more. I don't know. Um, and... <gasps> Light three! Okay. I think it was a good pick. I think it was a good pick. I'm happy. Good. So right now, I'm going to leave uh, this swatch on my forehead and let it set, let it, let it live with its own life and we'll see if it's going to change its shade. In the meantime, guys, this is supposed to be some sort of a serum foundation. <laughs> Although, when it comes to ingredients list, <laughs> it's... It's shady! Oh my gosh, it's so shady. <laughs> if you would go to Pat McGrath Labs, you don't really care, you don't have a chance to read the ingredients. There is no possibility to look for the ingredients. You have a little bit description of what kind of ingredients you have, but you don't have the ingredient list. <laughs> the only source of the ingredients list would be here on the box where you can see it right now, or Sephora. <laughs> because Pat McGrath, she doesn't have it. So shady. She doesn't have a full ingredients list. She only have a little bit of a description. How shady. I think this is the only brand that doesn't do that. Is it? Is it even like legal? <laughs> I don't know. I digress a little bit, but I was definitely shook. So guys, right now you can see a uh, full ingredients list that has been taken from French Sephora side. And what we can see, <laughs> not much. <laughs> I mean, this foundation has been formulated in the times when skin caring foundations, they did not really exist. They, there was no need. People definitely were looking for the foundations that were looking good and performing very well. And that was the main goal. So, no wonder that in here you don't see much of uh, active ingredients. What do we see then? This is a water-based foundation and the first ingredient is water. Then we have some silicones and we have alcohol. What a shame. What a shame that we have alcohol. This is an alcohol as well based foundation, which means that it might not be for everyone and especially people who have sensitive skin or are allergic to alcohol. I personally know such people. So as a person that is having channel for everyone, I definitely need to mention that the foundation with alcohol might not be for everyone. Still, we are going to test it out and see if there is some extra dryness because from my experience, I do know some foundations with alcohol that there are no drying and there I know some foundations that I have alcohol and they are drying. We're going to see what kind of foundation this is. All right, guys, and after alcohol, we have glycerin. Glycerin brings moisture to the skin and it's just right after alcohol, which is a good news, which means that the perfect blend of alcohol and the glycerin might actually be uh, non-drying and rather moisturizing, but most importantly, a non-drying foundation. We shall test it out, we, we shall see. It is actually very good news that the glycerin is very high up because it is a very good moisturizing ingredient. And then we have ingredients that are used to formulate uh, the product that gives a special consistency and viscosity and we have some emollients as well. And then we have the ingredients that it's called Benzimidazole, Diamond, Amidoethyl, Urea, Carbomyl, Propyl, Polymethyl, <laughs> Oh my gosh, so such a strange ingredient. Basically, this is a colorant and this is probably one of the powders that I'm going to tell in just a second. Uh, Caprile Capri Trick Lesson, it's an emollient. And we go down and then we have a very interesting ingredient. I think the only one ingredient that can be um, uh, called as an active ingredient and it is Rubus Idaeus Leaf Cell Culture. And 
when it comes to that ingredient, there is a special site that I used, Josie, uh, JosieRoseSkincare.com. And what is she telling about this ingredient? She's saying, she is telling that it's an isolated raspberry cultured steam stem cells. Due to the fatty acid makeup of the culture with the presence of several types of fatty acids, palmitic, stearic, oleic, linoleic and alinoleic acids. These fatty acids, besides being the primary components of the epidermal protective hydrolipidic film, uh, have key roles in the regulation of the different steps of the healing process in the skin. The culture works to increase hyaluronic acid content in the dermis and the epidermis improving the structure of the extracellular matrix and helping to ensure skin flexibility and firmness as well as moisture. So the ingredient benefits is improves skin moisture. And this is the ingredient that can be found in this, um, in this foundation. And then when you look further, I guess that's it. I guess that is really it. There is nothing more that is worth to be mentioned. By the way, a little bit of a disclaimer. I am not any expert by any means. I'm a person that looks for information on the internet. I'm a self learner, but uh, I believe that knowing the ingredients and knowing what are we putting on our face is very important because um, I don't know how you, but me, sometimes I wear makeup for 10 hours, for 15 hours. I am a very busy person in my personal life. So when I put on makeup, I just sometimes go and then I just come back after 15 hours and then I take off my makeup. So for me, it is definitely very important to know what am I wearing? What am I putting for on my face and keeping for such a long time? Good. And then... If you if you would go uh, to the uh, to the uh, Pat McGrath website, the only information about the ingredients is this one because there are no detailed ingredients list on the website. So shady. <laughs> Biocompatible powder technology featuring specially coated pigments mimic skin's natural structure to provide enhanced wear, blendability and buildability. I mean, what is a biocompatible powder technology? No one knows. Which kind of an ingredient it is? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, if you are an expert in the ingredients list and you would like to share it with us and maybe explain further, what does it mean? A biocompatible powder technology? Please do. Please share it with us. And then we have this diamond core powder that converts and scatters light for a blurring illuminated effect and the appearance of smoother, healthy, youthful skin. And that is probably that ingredient that I just read it. I've been so long. Please don't ask me to repeat the name again. And then we have a Vita Serum Complex. It's designed to boost hydration by activating the natural production of hyaluronic acid and ceramides. So maybe this active in the form of the... Rubus idaeus leaf, uh, leaf uh, cell culture is this ingredient. I cannot tell you for sure. And then we have formulated without parabens, talc of fragrance, and it is oil free foundation. And that's it, guys. That's it, what I have to say and tell you about the ingredients list. And now let's check the swatch and see if it has changed or oxidized. All right, guys, so right now we have read and finished uh, analyzing the ingredients. So let's jump into this incredible foundation, a serum foundation and what not with a very interesting and shady ingredients list that are just hidden on the web. I can't stop repeating myself and talking about this because this is something that I haven't seen before. But all right, without I, I'm going to I'll be serious now. If you would go to the website, what can you 
uh, what the website can actually tell you about this foundation. You can see it right now. This is the foundation that has 36 shades. It has medium buildable coverage. It has satin finish, 12 hour wear, weightless, self-setting, non-comedogenic, all skin types and 35 milliliters of the product. A divine revelation in foundation technology. This complexion transforming wonder is the accumulation of over 25 years of iconic artistry. The silky serum-like formula blends and builds seamlessly for a sheer second skin tint to a perfected medium coverage that wears comfortably for 12 hours. Featuring a soft focus satin finish, the light as air texture is infused with ingredients renowned for their hydrating, smoothing and illuminating properties. The second step in the skin fetish sublime perfection system, this all skin type friendly foundation is available in 36 universal color choices and five shade levels for customizable couture coverage. So this is what the website can tell you about this foundation. So right now let's go back to the swatch and see if the foundation has oxidized because I think this is this is something that is very important and probably many people would like to know and discover. And there you have it guys. This foundation does oxidize. And when you're gonna when you're gonna go to the shop and swatch and you might see that the foundation is too light give a little bit of time to yourself to see if on your skin it is going to oxidize and if it's going to oxidize how much because as you can see the shade light three this is the one that has oxidized and this is the one that is fresh as you can see the oxidation is quite significant which for me actually makes me very happy because it looks like for my fair tone skin it is going to be a perfect shade so yes i can definitely confirm the oxidation with the pat mcgrath foundation Good guys, so allow me now to wipe the, the swatches and let's go and play a little bit with the makeup. All right guys, so as you can see, the swatches are gone and we are ready. I am ready and I'm really very excited about this super unique foundation, unique formulation and whatnot. It is actually really very lightweight. So yes, at first I'm going to cover half of my face and we're going to continue and compare and see what how it is going to look like. So first, it is really very liquidy. I've, oh my gosh, I do have some of the foundations that are liquidy, but I hardly ever have a chance to have that type of a liquidy foundation. I am uh, very curious about this because sometimes, guys, um, a super lightweight liquid foundation disappears from my face. It just does, you know, it just does because it is so lightweight. Anyway, uh, Pat McGrath, usually in her tutorial, she takes a brush and she applies such foundation with a brush. So on this side, I am going to use a brush as well. And we are going to see what kind of effect we're going to have. And yes, I can definitely confirm that it gives me a very nice light coverage. The first layer, absolutely. It melts very nice with my skin. It, I'm not sure. I will have to check it, uh, check it later. Um, but I... I think it has some sort of a parfum. I will I will verify that in just a second. Um, good. Um, it is it is cute. I I guess I suppose as Pat McGrath she has described that the first layer is going to be a little bit like a serumy type of a skin tint, but I would like to have a little bit more of of the coverage. So I'm going to take take some more and this time I'm going to just to tap it like that. Yeah, the coverage is definitely buildable, but this is the foundation that contains alcohol. So I am definitely not going to uh, put this foundation in my under eye area. 
because I don't want to add an extra dryness. By the way, my skin is already uh, prepped with the best skincare adapted to my age and my needs and most importantly, the sunscreen because I had I had um, an acid exfoliation during the night and I definitely need to protect my skin. Good. I guess this is the coverage that I would like to uh, see right now. I'm happy with that coverage uh, on my face. So allow me to approach so that you can see it uh, for yourself. Okay. So this is a healthy skin. <laughs> this is a healthy skin. This is how it looks like. Um, and then this is the face half and half. It looks nice. It looks cool. And this is how it looks like from the close up. Um, hmm. It doesn't really look like the second skin. There's, I don't know, I, I have some, um, hmm. it looks a little bit more on the, it goes rather more on the makeup -y side. I, um, I don't know, I don't know. For example, if I would like to compare it with Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk, I prefer Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk that is definitely much more smoothing to my skin. This rather goes towards the makeup -y look. It looks nice, it looks pretty, but I don't know, it doesn't look like a second skin. Maybe I would have to use some sort of a primer to compensate it, but mm, I see, you know, this is, this. I see some pores. I do not see any extra smoothing that I would like to see in a foundation, like for example, Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk has. Yeah, I can see some texture over here. It is good, it is good, but right now, um, I'm not really blown away. <laughs> Good, guys. I'm going to leave this foundation to have its own life. And right now, we're going to jump into the next product, which is going to be a super famous product, a concealer. And yes, guys, the concealer that I would like to talk about would be this one. It is called Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Concealer Corrector. Mine is in the shade L2. This is how the product looks like. And yeah, I guess this is the product that is very famous for years. And it is everyone's favorite um, concealer. So I was definitely very intrigued, very interested. And I said, um, since my under eye area is extremely demanding, it's absolutely almost impossible to find um, a good concealer. I am very curious and I want to test it out. If the foundation and the concealer are going to be a good product for the mature skin. So let's open the product and there it is, the concealer. And this is something that is interesting as well, which means that the packaging is, is not very cohesive. Like, look, I don't understand this. The bottle here is frosted. Here, the bottle, although glass, it's not frosted. Then there is some kind of a gold here around the black cap. There is no gold in here. There is a sticker in here and there's no sticker in here. It's just, it's very inconsistent. I'm very confused. It is, it is as if that would be a different line and that's a different line and even the shape. And it's not from, I, I know, Um, I'm a very picky when it comes to details, but I'm just a person that looks for the perfection. And mm, this is like, mm, not very matchy-matchy, let's just say, not very matchy-matchy. Good, but I digress, I talk too much. Let's go and apply the concealer and see the, the how it is going to look like. I'm going to mix it just a little bit in here. And ta-da, okay, good, cool, okay. I don't know about the pigmentation or anything. This is the first use, so we're going to see how it is going to look like. But the shade L2 is actually, I like it. Um, it is one shade lighter because my foundation is an L3. The concealer is an L2. I think this is actually a very good 
uh, good um, shape. I'm going to take a little bit of a sponge like so and I'm going to apply it and see how, what kind of what we're gonna get from this, okay? All right, very lightweight, but it gives me a coverage, guys. It gives me a coverage. I'm going to spread this concealer just like so. So I'm going to have, as you can see, a little bit of a lift in here. Very interesting formula. I was expecting this formula that is going to be very thick and kind of creamy paste, like a, almost like a paste. No, it is actually a very, very lightweight uh, formula and it blends very nice. Look at this. Spreads very nice. Good. And as you can see, it is very matchy matchy with the foundation. This area is a little bit brightened, but that's okay. I like it. So allow me to approach once again. This is a side of a face that is uncovered. And then this is the side that is covered. Very interesting. And then the concealer, it has creased already because, well, in my personal situation, I don't know any concealer that would not crease in my fine lines and wrinkles. I just have so many fine lines and so many wrinkles that for me, it is an absolute natural situation that it creases in the fine lines and wrinkles. Good. Okay, guys. Very nice. So allow me now uh, to apply uh, this on the other side of my face and we're going to come back with this test. All right, guys, and so here we are back with the foundation fully applied. Just a reminder, on this side, I applied the foundation with a brush, while on this side, I went with a, with a beauty sponge to see how it is going to look like, and it looks exactly the same. So the application, what are tool you're going to use, it doesn't really make any difference. But what I can see actually is that it looks makeup-y. It is actually a, because it's it's saying it's claiming that it's some sort of a serum like skin uh, looking uh, foundation. In my opinion, it is not. I definitely can recommend a foundations that looks like second skin, and one of them, for example, is Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk, very smoothing, very pretty, or like Dior Natural Nude or Chanel Numero Un. This one rather goes more towards the foundation type of a makeup. Um, I mean, foundation type of makeup that looks like makeup, you know? I'm a very big fan of makeup, no makeup. This foundation, I don't think it's the one. But, you know, instead of just talking and <laughs> talking and talking, allow me to approach so that I'm going to show you. Um, I can see texture. Basically, I can see texture on my face. Here, my pores, I can see my pores. I know some foundations that they give an extra smooth. I can see texture. And then when it comes to concealer, as you can see, it has creased as well. So we'll see. We'll see how it is going to look like. And then on my forehead, I have this big crease and it has settled in my crease. Um, usually foundations, they don't do that. So I was hoping to be overwhelmed and I'm like, okay. I'm like, okay, good. Um, the next product I, that I would like to talk about that is very famous and very viral would be this one, guys. And it is Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Blurring Under uh, Eye Powders, Poudre Cache Cerne, Perfection Sublime. And as you can see, it is very sparkly. It is brand new, ready to be unboxed, this glitter inside. And then there is a little bit of the explanation right over here so that you can have a look. And guys, this is how the product looks like. 
uh, I guess this is the product that is the most famous uh, on the internet among many user makeup artists and just among everyone who wants to have the best powder in the under eye area and I am the same type of a person. So since I cannot really find a very good concealer and a very good non-drying powder, I went for Pat McGrath. I went for Pat McGrath because if she is claimed to have the best products for the under eye in the form of a concealer and the powder, uh, why not? I should not try it. So yes, guys, let's go and unbox this little toy and see how it performs on my super demanding and mature skin. All right, so the powder is uh, unboxed and this is how the packaging looks like. Mine is in the shade light and there it is, the powder. Very interesting. And by <laughs> the mirror, can you see, can you see the, the, the size of this mirror? This, this is a joke. I mean... <laughs> A joke but like okay uh, so because some people might think oh you're so shady you're so picky and you're so shady let me just give you let me just give you a comparison for example okay good so this is the Pat McGrath right and for example this is the product from Rare Beauty it is almost the same size if not the same uh, made of plastic cool this here it's kind of like stick while the rare beauty for example it is actually sticking out i don't know if you can see it's not really like painted first it's sticking out and then the writing is is painted and then another thing for comparison would be that 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 where is it that mirror can you see the mirror how tiny this is Look in the comparison with a rare beauty. Can you see the size? Wait a second. Can you see the size? It's <laughs> and then as you know, it's just like have a comparison of, of the products, the packaging, and the packaging. It makes a huge difference. I definitely. The, enjoy much more the packaging from the rare beauty and i personally think i don't know it just just gives me such a giggle that teeny tiny mirror and is it like is it safe is it gonna be is it gonna maybe it's gonna fall out and and cut me i don't know i'm having lots of thoughts but hey i digress good guys Let's use this powder in, uh, uh, in my under eye area and see how it is going to look like and how it is going to perform. So uh, allow me to check if I have any creases and now use my fingers to blend the creases. Good. And I'm going to take this powder. Good. And take the Beauty Blender puff which is my favorite and i'm going to first all right oh oh my gosh okay wow the smoothness the smoothness it is incredible it is really incredible so i'm going to glide uh, this puff over here i think we have enough of the powder one last time i'm going to check if we have some creases And now I am going to apply the powder. Let's see the result. Okay. 
Oh, wow. Okay. Yes. The powder is definitely applied over here. I can sense some extra smoothness. This is still a little bit like tacky. This is, look, super smooth. This, see, the, the skin drags because it's kind of it's, uh, a little bit tacky. Okay, good, good. In that case, I'm going to uh, take this powder just a little bit more on this path and use it in the almost like the t-zone area to see if there's going to be some sort of an extra smoothness there is an extra smoothness and i'm going to approach so that you can see it for yourself this is the non-powdered i see texture it's a little bit like a makeup -y type of a foundation and the, the concealer and this is the powdered it is smooth and uh, yeah i can definitely feel some smoothness in here when it comes to blurring not too much not too much good as you can see the foundation has fully now um oxidized so it is actually the light three it is actually very matchy especially with a concealer and now everything is kind of having its own real shade good but right now it is time to apply a little bit of a colors and we have some products to feature in this episode. All right, guys, so it is time to add a little bit of color to my face because as you can see, well, certain foundations, they look like second skin and you're good to go without adding any extra colors. And here I have an impression that mm, I'm a little bit on the mask mask type of a of a face right now i'm a little bit of a cancelled type of a face right now and i feel i should add some colors to 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 bring back to my life i don't have bronzers because they haven't arrived yet so we will feature that in a separate video but i do have some blushes and i do have some highlighters the first product that i would like to talk about <laughs> would be this one guys it was a limited edition um blush and highlight from bridgerton guys <laughs> this is uh, <laughs> we're going to talk about this in just a moment then you open this box and ta-da you have a very unique formulation of blushes and the highlight i was very intrigued and i always wanted to have it and i snatched it so guys this is how the product looks like and you can see um, how they look like in the natural sunlight. Are they a little bit sparkly? Are they a little bit uh, glowy? Um, it is definitely a very unique formulation and this is how the box, the box looks like and... <laughs> Well, um, this was a limited edition that has appeared because of the Bridgerton TV show that is all about the vintage um, world, the vintage type of a reality, a vintage makeup. So they created this. I mean, uh, uh, without being shady. About a... Oh my gosh, there's something flying in here. I'm so scared. I hope that has. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, back to the subject. I suppose Pat McGrath has no idea how back in the days uh, a vintage makeup looked like. It looked like a jewelry. It actually looked like a jewelry. Usually, it was in some sort of a metal box that was beautiful, wonderful. It had some mirror, and then it had some puffs. It has some situation. <laughs> I don't think that Pat McGrath knows about the vintage makeup. You can actually observe lots of incredible, interesting vintage makeup on Instagram. Just saying, just saying, Pat McGrath. And she said this, a carton box extravaganza, no eleganza. I mean, what is happening? Is this the luxury brand that we're talking about? I... <laughs> I don't know how you, okay? If you consider Pat McGrath as a luxury brand, that's totally fine. And I'm very happy for you. But I've been served with this paper carton box situation. And I was just like, what? 
what and why it is so big why it there's no mirror in here let's just say like there is no mirror and the blushes are really very tiny look this is my thumb the blush is almost at the size of my thumb and why what there's nothing in here there's nothing in here you could use one fourth of this space and squeeze these blushes and make it much more luxurious when i look at this when i look at this it is as as if i would have been invited to some sort of a dinner and since i'm a very frenchy night now type of a person i arrive at the chateau at the restaurant and i'm like ah, i'm here i'm here and then um i'm seeing the dinner served with the plastic dishes and i'm like okay okay and then i i take my seat and I'm like i'm ready for the dinner please serve me the foie gras Please serve me as a starter, the Saint-Jacques, and let, let's have a sip of the Bordeaux or Chardonnay. And they look at me like, Sir, this is the American dinner. You're going to have a burger and cola. <laughs> so yes, guys, this, this is that type of a vibe. I mean... Do I see luxurious? No. I think that a packaging like this one is actually damaging the brand <laughs> and damaging the, the, the image of the brand as the luxury brand. This is my own personal opinion. And if you would like to take an example, because we're talking about the very similar price tag for this in comparison with Charlotte Tilbury. This is a very comparable price with four products inside, which is a highlighter and the three blushers. And look at this from Charlotte. <laughs> this, this, uh, like uh, this is a perfect example how the luxury product should look like when i when i'm getting this I'm like, what is with this carton box paper extravaganza elegance <laughs> i don't understand but hey that is my personal opinion okay that is just my personal opinion for me it was very important to snatch it because it is a very unique formulation unseen in the pat mcgrath and a very unique shade so it was a limited edition i have to have it and then the another palette this palette went out when there was a christmas time 2022 but i snatched this palette because it has um the the blushes that are or has been already introduced in the brand the names are over here so since i never had any kind of a blush instead of spending a lot of money for one brush i decided to spend money for a whole palette and having five products in the one this is how the product looks like and yes this palette is definitely very unique as i just mentioned it has five products four blushes and one highlighter so i'm definitely very intrigued and very um interested i would like to test it out how it is going to look like on my face and then guys <laughs> then guys when you actually unbox it there is another carton box paper eleganza extravaganza i mean pat mcgrath you can definitely take an inspiration from the real luxury brand that is called charlotte tilbury and maybe you know <laughs> it doesn't hurt to get inspired by the professionals and launch a product that is actually like like a gem you know it's actually a breathtaking instead of launching a packaging that is just damaging to the luxur luxury image of the brand itself my personal opinion and then you oh <laughs> you open this and then you have the unique blushes and the highlight and this is my thumb look this is not a very big blush i don't know it is kind of deceiving when you see those kind of promotional videos on the social media you have an impression that they're huge 
they're not actually they're not this is the side of the size of my thumb as you can see so it is not really a very big product so yes guys what are we actually going to do on this cheek i'm going to apply a little bit of this product and on the other cheek i'm going to apply the other product and we are going to give it a little bit of a comparison so what i'm going to do in here i'm going to take this type of a broom uh, brush and i'm going to swirl it all over as you can see it is very powdery a very unique i don't know if you can see it see there might be a lot of product i don't i don't want to you know over powder myself and let's go and apply okay it is appearing we can definitely see some some something appearing um i don't want to add it a lot i just want a little bit of a shade okay we have a little bit of a emergency already i don't want to over over apply the product but it is definitely pigmented and it is a very pretty blush that is rather more i think on the satin matte yeah there is no extra glow or anything and i'm going to take another brush like this one for example and i'm just going to use the highlight over here i think we have it and apply the highlight very pretty very nice good okay cool 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 i think we got this I'm actually very happy that I grabbed this. There might be a, because Bridgerton season three is coming. So there might be more Bridgerton collaboration coming out in the near future. This one, I think it's sold out. You, if you're lucky to get to grab it, you can grab it because the formulation is definitely very unique and it gives me a very nice color. I really, I really like it. So yes, on this side was here but right now let's go to the classics from pat mcgrath in the form of four blushes and a highlight and the blushes in here are desert orchid 2 divine rose um okay one more time guys the blushes in here are desert orchid 2 divine rose peony rose electric bloom and then there is a highlight in the form of in the name of a nude nectar i wonder what kind of blush do i want to use on this side first i'm going to pick up a brush good i have the brush and maybe i'll start with with this one and see what kind of effect i'm going to have And let's apply this. Oh, ooh, 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 ooh. okay. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> a little bit of a of a of a surprise in here. The Pat McGrath blushes, they're definitely very pigmented. They can uh, they can <laughs> it is pretty though, but hey, it is pigmented. Good. Okay. The situation is under control. It is a soft matte brush, a blush, a very pretty, a little bit peachy, as you can see. Okay, so let's let's add a little bit of a maybe this this one. I don't think I need a lot. Maybe just a swipe. Yeah, definitely. These uh, these blushes, they're definitely quite pigmented, to be honest. <laughs> I look a little bit, um, a little bit like scary. Let allow me to blend it all together. Good. Yeah, it looks very nice. And now let's check this special highlighter, the nude nectar, and let's give myself a little bit of a glow. And for that, I'm going to use another brush like this one. It is very powdery. 
it's, can you see it? Like, you have to definitely be very careful. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I was not expecting that, guys. I was not expecting that. You Okay, so my advice would be, if you are applying a product from Pat McGrath, definitely have a very light hand and blend it. But the glow it gives me, it is absolutely incredible and extraordinary. Okay, cool. Wow. Very interesting. Definitely a very interesting formulation when it comes to these blushes and the highlight. And this is how it looks like. Let me approach so that you can have a comparison one more time. The formulation, the very unique formulation from the Bridgerton on this side and the formulation of the standard blushes on this side, guys. So this is the Bridgerton. Very nice, very vibrant, soft matte, beautiful. And this is the typical uh, formulation of the blushes but Piper Craft with a highlighter and the highlighter I actually enjoy a lot. It melts with my skin without accentuating uh, the texture and the fine lines and everything. Uh, in fact, since I'm quite glowy in here, I'm going to go back to this highlighter one more time Take the brush one more time and apply this in here. Good. Right now I have an equal type of a glow, although mm, this highlight, no. I think this uh, the, the highlight that comes from this palette, the Nude Nectar, it looks better. This one looks a little bit uneven, not my type of a vibe. Good, guys. So that would be all when it comes to the blushes. And right now, let's go to another part and let's talk a little bit of, about the eye products. All right, guys. So the next category that I would like to talk about would be the eye palettes because uh, Pat McGrath is definitely known for its unique formulation when it comes to the eyeshadows and I actually in front of me have three palettes to be featured. I am not going to make a huge incredible super dramatic eye look. I'm just going to feature this palette and from these palettes we're going to do something simple. I Maybe it's going to be a little bit of a sparkly just to give a little bit of life to my eyelids. So these palettes I managed to get during the Christmas 2022 season and I kept it and I never actually had an opportunity to uh, to feature them. So since today we are doing a full face of Pat McGrath, I said to myself, why not? Let's give it a go. So the first palette that I would like to talk about would be this one and it is the eyeshadow quad and it is called Celestial Odyssey Look Squad in the shade Bronze Borealis. This is how the product looks like. And yeah, I mean, uh, it looks definitely nice. It looks luxurious because this one is, is um, in its unique non carton box eleganza, non extravaganza uh, wrapping, should I say. So guys, it is definitely time now to unbox it and to show you that. You can as well see uh, how the eyeshadows looks like in um, in the sunlight. So are they a little bit of a sparkly? They definitely do. They are very intriguing and I can't wait to put at least one of them on my eyelids and see the result. So it is time to unbox it. And there you have it, guys the Pat McGrath and this is definitely in my opinion the path the Pat McGrath should go not this one but definitely this one this is luxurious this is heavy this is glossy this screams Pat McGrath quality and this is what the brand and the the vis visage the the image the image of the brand is known for and then when you open this you have these kind of a unique 
eyeshadows right over here. I'm very curious about the sparkly one, the lightest one. We might apply some on my eyelids. So this is the first palette. And then let's move on to the next one. This one, the, the pinkish one. And it is called Pat McGrath Labs Celestial Nirvana Eyeshadow Palette in the shade Bronze Bliss. This is how the product looks like. And again, a very intriguing palette, although when it comes to quality packaging, it is definitely not as good as the one that I just showed you. And I'm, I'm just like... <laughs> I'm just not digging it. Uh, the reason why I got these two eyeshadow palettes was because of the of the color story. Something that l for me definitely it is very interesting, and I definitely wanted to test out the um, the uh, the formulation of the eyeshadow. So I got these two. But in a normal situation, I would probably go rather more with these kind of luxurious plastic packaging instead of the carton box <laughs> extravaganza, you know? <laughs> anyway, it's time to unbox it. And there you have it. I guess the most beautiful paper <laughs> wrapping that you can have from a luxurious brand, Pat McGrath. And then you have these eyeshadows and I believe this eyeshadow story is definitely very interesting and very intriguing. And one of these eyeshadows is actually very comparison with one over here. This one is definitely light. These ones are lighter from this one, but they're quite similar. I'm definitely very intrigued and interested to see how these sparkly shades are going to look on my eyelid. And then the last palette that I would like to feature in today's episode would be this one. And it is the Pat McGrath Last Celestial Nirvana Eyeshadow Palette in the shade Nude Allure. This is how the product looks like. And again, the color story is definitely very intriguing. You can see how the eyeshadow looks like in the natural sunlight. Are they sparkly? Are they, you know, because... The, re the reason why I did it was if you would look at the promotional videos of Pat McGrath, they're always filled. <laughs> the brand, I don't know. I'm <laughs> For me, the brand is not very honest <laughs> when it comes to um, uh, presenting products to the clients. <laughs> they're putting some sort of a shady filters that make their products look extremely sparkly, extremely attractive, and then it arrives, and then you just, uh, this is made of paper, I mean carton. <laughs> this is my own personal opinion, guys. If you love Pat McGrath, that's totally fine. In the social media, we have a right to have our own opinion. So there you go, and this one is rather more colorful st uh, story in here. And yeah, it is actually very interesting, I think, as well. So what are we going to do now? I am going to play with these eyeshadows off the camera. These, these, and these. And apply these eyeshadows and I'll be back in just a second so that we can save a little bit of a time and continue with this episode. All right, guys, and so here we are back with a finished look while using the eyeshadows that I've just shown you. So from the Christmas limited edition and the one that is the luxurious quad, okay? So basically what has happened on my eyes, let me just explain you. One of them that is called, what's your name? What's your name? <laughs> bronze bliss bronze bliss has been applied rather on this side of my eyes giving me this type of an effect which is very beautiful very sparkly something that i love is that kind of a je ne sais quoi moment a very subtle and very unique i love it while the majority of the other eyeshadow palette which is called the nude allure has appeared on this eye i can't close the other eye 
and this is the result a little bit of these shadows and uh, these shadows what i've noticed they're very powdery which means if you have a very heavy hand be very gentle because this is just one dip and look what i've done to this eyeshadow i almost destroyed the eyeshadow you have to be really very gentle and you do not have to pick up a lot of product just a little bit a very subtle way and build it up and build it up this is my advice when it comes to uh, this eyeshadows and then the quad i used this one just to blend uh, in the upper part to give a little bit of a frame and a little bit of a shadow a very interesting eyeshadows guys a very interesting although as i've said be very gentle if you have a heavy hand you definitely need to be very gentle with uh, with these eyeshadows and when it comes to the final look guys this is how it looks like two looks one is a little bit more sparkly the other one is a little bit more kind of like you know uh, sexy sophisticated so yes that would be my personal eye look when it comes to these palettes and right now let's jump onto the last product that i would like to feature in today's episode so yes guys this look is almost done i mean so far so good and the last the final touch the cherry on the cake would be the lip products first product i would like to talk about would be this one and it is called pat mcgrath last gloss lip gloss mine is in the shade belladonna this is how the product looks like and i suppose when it comes to packaging even when they're made of of the paper and of a carton they're definitely very intriguing and very interesting someone who designs these things uh, it's a it's a real artist i definitely can confirm i would just like if they would change all these carton box extravaganza into the plastic something that back in the past uh, Pat McGrath was famous for she was faming as uh, she was she was famous for heavy plastic black packaging mixed with gold and that was amazing these days are they gone are they gone <laughs> but anyway i digress so this is the packaging and then look at this you do do that and then you take out the gloss and this is the gloss in a very very beautiful pinky type of a shade this is the shade belladonna and then there's a little bit of a gold right over here this is plastic oh well and then uh, the second uh, lip gloss lip product that i would like to talk about would be this one i mean this this is the pure artistry i love it i really enjoy it and this is the last gloss uh, lip gloss in the shade peach perversion <laughs> i mean these names okay these names these days this is how the product looks like and it is another lip gloss um when i was ordering online i wasn't really sure what kind of color would fit me the most the best i do like lip glosses but i like when they are subtle when they are not super punchy when it comes to pigments so i chose this one and yeah we're just going to see and another as you can see this is how you unbox it and then there is a lip gloss that is coming out and this one i don't know if you can see it has a little bit of a sparkle but it is in a very i, I think like subtle color it's not a very very vibrant color so i'm very curious how it is going to look like in comparison bella donna and this was the the peach perversion belladonna and the peach perversion so first allow me to do the swatches on my hand so that we can see and compare because obviously i can wear only one this is the belladonna okay good awesome oh wow okay cool this is going to be super subtle but it is definitely going to be visible and then the peach perversion
good. Okay, beautiful. This is almost invisible. Love that. Good. Okay. So guys, allow me to show you the swatches. This is the Belladonna. And this is the Peach Perversion. The Peach Perversion is almost invisible. It just gives you a beautiful gloss. Now you can see it. While the Belladonna is much more courageous when it comes to pigment. I think I'm going to choose the, the you know, the peach pear version and then we're going to see how it is going to look like on my lips. Mm. It is very interesting taste, like a little bit of a vanilla. Mm. Although mm, this is very interesting, obviously, because my lips, they have their own color. And my hand has a different color. So in the, the, that's why it's always you have to pay attention to the swatches because the swatches on your hand might look completely different than the, on your lips because your lips are different. Anyway, I digress. So uh, this is the Belladon. Uh, this is the peach perversion on my hand. And this is the peach perversion on my lips. Hmm. Looks, uh, looks different. Definitely looks different. In that case, since I want a little bit of a color... I'm going to change to Belladonna and see how the Belladonna is going to look on my lips because I want a little bit of a color. Obviously, I'm not going to put foundation on my lips to have the most accurate shade of the Belladonna. I'm just going to do it like this. Okay. Pretty. Hmm, pretty. Very nice, very pretty, very um, vanilla taste type of a lip gloss. Perfect. Not too much of a color, just about right, guys. Just about right. I love it. Good, guys. So the test has ended. Let me now... Uh, fix things that might need some fixing and I'll be back in just a second and we'll continue with this episode. All right guys, so there you have it, finished look using the Pat McGrath products that are over here. <laughs> there you have it, all of the things that I talked about has been applied on my face and this is the makeup that you can achieve from Pat McGrath and let me approach so that you can see it for yourself and so that you can see your own judgment. What do you think? Are these products good? How do they look on my face? Um, are they worth your attention? And one, I wonder. And then when it comes to eyeshadows, this is how it looks like on both eyes and the lips. Beautiful gloss. So this is the final look. But guys, obviously the first impression is completely different in comparison with the longevity, how the makeup is going to look like in the natural light outside as well, and how the makeup is going to look like after at least seven hours of wearing. So what is going to happen? Um, allow me to take you on a walk outside when we can do the check-in in the natural light and see how this makeup is going to look like. And in the end, I would like to invite you for my final check-in and my final thoughts based uh, on my experience while working for with these products. So yes, let's do that and let's do those checking. So the first check-in is going to happen right now in the natural light. I'll see you in just a second. <laughs> Hello, gorgeous, beautiful stars. <laughs> Paris Star Channel here with a check-in in the natural light. And look how beautiful this natural light is. We're starting to have a real spring. The flowers are blooming everywhere. It is gorgeous, it is beautiful, we have a beautiful light. So let's take the advantage of that and allow me to present myself and this makeup from Pat McGrath in a natural light. So, 
look out, I'm approaching. So that you can see it, everything in a full glory. The concealer, the eyeshadows and everything. And then the powder side of the concealer, the unpowdered side of the concealer. And I don't know if you can see the eyeshadows as well. So this is how everything looks like. And I guess my greatest concern is the foundation is losing its moisture and it's draining the moisture from my skin. You can see it, the fine lines, the worst fine lines that I have has appeared. They're continuing here. And then we're gonna uh, see how it's gonna look like for the end of the day. So, you know, let's just be honest. For now, this makeup looks actu actually beautiful. It looks really very nice, very nice, very beautiful. But then is it for the mature skin? Hard to tell. So yes, let's go back to the studio for a final check-in and see how the products Pat McGrath are going to look like on my mature skin after hours and hours of wearing it. See you in the studio in just a second. Hello, gorgeous, beautiful stars. E -E. Paris Star Channel here welcomes you with this final check-in and my final thoughts um, about the products, about working, about my experience while working with the products from Pat McGrath. And guys, it is really late. Let me just show you. <laughs> Let me just show you. There you go. As you can see, it is almost midnight, so it is definitely very late and wait a second, let me just put this down. It is time to wash this makeup, give my skin a little bit of a rest because my skin is definitely tired. But before we go into do it, let's jump quickly into the subject and summarize everything what has happened. Let me just tell you one more thing. For a few days, I have been playing with this makeup and with the products from Path McGrath. So I definitely have some experience that I would like to share it with you. But, but before we're going to do it, allow me to approach so that you can see this makeup, how it looks like after hours and hours of wearing it. I think it's, it's like 10 hours or something. I totally lost the track of time. As you can see, it's definitely late. It's before midnight. So... There you have it. This is how this makeup looks like from the close-up. All the products on my face and on my eyelids are from the Pat McGrath. And then from the close-up, this is how the concealer looks like. I did all my best about the concealer. So this side is the lightest side with a concealer uh, with a slightest, uh, very light hand set with the powder. This is how it looks like. And this is a little bit packed with a beauty blender and non-set. So it's up to you to decide, do you like it? What do you think? Your opinion is what matters most. And then the eyeshadows from the close-up this is how it looks like and once again this is how the makeup from pat mcgrath looks like as a whole so yes guys it is time now to start and uh, talk about the products so you know so that because there's definitely lots of things and thoughts that i would like to share you with so first it is the foundation pat mcgrath foundation mine was in the shade l3 and uh, there you go <laughs> there you go the foundation guys there is only one thing and one word what i can use to describe this foundation it is in my opinion a correct foundation so if you would ask me questions how does it wear how does it wear correctly what kind of um a coverage does it have a correct coverage and everything everything is just correct but 
not overwhelming and this is my own personal issue i thought that a foundation for that type of a price it's going to be overwhelming it's going to shake me uh, it's going to knock my socks off and it didn't it rather goes towards the uh, the makeup um type looking type of a foundation than the really a uh, second skin type of a uh, foundation so i suppose that is my personal issue the second thing is it's a super light water like formulation which i am not a very big fan of i like a little bit of a thicker formulation and then <laughs> I don't know. Once again, if someone would ask me, what do I think about this foundation? I think that it is a correct foundation, but it doesn't overwhelm me. So if someone would ask me again, how does the Pat McGrath formulation of the foundation compare to Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk? Let me just tell you, because I don't know if you know, but back in the days, Pat McGrath was working under the wings of the Giorgio Armani. And during that time, the Luminous Silk has been born. A classic, wonderful foundation. And then Pat McGrath, she left Giorgio Armani. She created her own brand and then she created her own foundation. On her website, she even says that she uses her own experience 25 years of experience to formulate her own product. So obviously some sort of an experience while working for Giorgio Armani had to be transferred to her own foundation. So how do they compare? In my opinion, not too much. <laughs> this is thicker uh, formula. This is almost water type of a formula. There is much more better shade range in here. In here, the shade range is a little bit off, very often yellow. <laughs> this looks like a second skin and it's beautiful on its own. This, ah, you have to work with, with this to make it look beautiful. And what I'm trying to say, the, this foundation on its own, it's a little bit musky and makeup-y. But if you will combine it with the other products like primers, colors, bronzers, um, setting sprays, then it spreads its wings and then it looks beautiful. But on its own, definitely George Armani look, Luminous Six look like second skin. This, you need to work with the other products to make it work. And then in the end, if someone would have asked me, what are my personal best foundations as of today? For that amount of money, if you are looking for a very beautiful looking foundation that looks just beautiful and lasts long, that would be Giorgio Armani. If you're looking for the foundation that is great for the mature skin with great ingredients inside, that would be Chanel Numero 1. So if I would like, to, if you would ask me what kind of foundation I would recommend instead of buying this, I would recommend one of these or maybe both of them. It depends on your own personal budget and on your own personal preference. So that is my opinion when it comes to this foundation. I believe that it is a good foundation, a correct foundation, but this is not a shocking foundation. Paris Star Channel gives a green light to this foundation. I just was expecting much more from it and it hasn't been delivered. Nonetheless, it works for me and this is how it looks like. Good. Moving on, guys. Moving on. Second product that I would like to talk about would be this one. The Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Concealer. Mine is in the shade L2. Allow me to approach so that you can see it. Today I layered here in the most, the best way that I could, and then uh, very lightly, and then I, I set it very lightly with a powder. And here I packed it a little bit more to get a little bit more of a coverage. It's up to you to decide if this kind of a result satisfies you, because me, 
I have some issues, guys. I have some issues because every time when I was putting it, my eyes were getting some sort of an allergy reaction where they were just crying. I was getting a waterfalls of tears. I was like, what is happening? What is happening? And then again, I put it. And then again, I was crying. I was, what is happening? I could not even retouch it because when I was retouching it, again, my eyes were, were just like getting waterfalls. And then I looked into the ingredients list of this concealer and I was shook. There is an alcohol in here. In the concealer, an alcohol, I don't know. Um, okay, I don't know what kind of approach is yours, but my skin, especially around my areas, is very, very sensitive. So if there is an alcohol that just vaporizes probably and just goes away, it absolutely does something to my eyes and my eyes starts to cry. I could not believe it. Normally, I I can go with uh, foundations that have alcohol because in here, our skin is thick. But in our under eye area or on our lips, this is the thinnest skin. So if it has alcohol, I was like, <laughs> very big disappointment, guys. Very big, big disappointment. I guess... Um, some people may say beauty uh, has to come at some sort of a cost. I'm not okay with that type of a cost. And I'm not okay with the fact that a concealer has alcohol. And especially my under eye area are not okay with this. I can describe this concealer as some sort of an aggressive concealer. It tries to grip to the skin, set with a, <laughs> on the skin, and tries to stay for as long as possible. But then again... My under eye area does not like it. It is, it is kind of like drying and it's very tiring. Usually after washing this makeup, I would have to plump my skin, put some under eye patches and just, you know, make my skin and uh, help my skin to rest. So for me personally, in my opinion, despite the fact that it doesn't look really very bad, it looks quite okay. As for that type of a concealer, Paris Star Channel gives an orange light. I, I am just not okay with the fact that the product for the under eye area is filled with alcohol. And that is my personal opinion. Orange light to the concealer from Pat McGrath. Good. Moving on, guys. Moving on. Powder. Pat McGrath powder. Um, I suppose I can understand why it is so famous. It is a very unique, super smoothing formula and blurring, and I can definitely confirm that. It is not super drying to the under eye area. It is a perfecting powder. Is it one of its kind? No. I can definitely tell you one thing. I don't know if you've ever... Uh, had a chance to tell to try the NARS pressed powder. This is how the pressed powder from NARS looks like. See, like reflecting powder from NARS. And then allow me to show you the one from Pat McGrath. This is this is Pat McGrath. This is NARS. One more time, allow me to touch the NARS. They're very, very similar, in my opinion, in its formulation. They're doing a very similar job when it comes to blurring and when it comes to smoothing. And so for me, the formulation from Pat McGrath, it is not really a very unique foundation. It is not really a very unique formulation and it can be replaced by other powders. When it comes to much more affordable versions, then I don't know if you have, you know a brand like a Kiko Cosmetics. It's a Kiko Milano, an Italian brand. This is one of their old powders, but any powder that is in the pressed form, it is very similar, guys. It is very similar. So this is much more affordable. So for me, this formulation proposed by Pat McGrath, it is not the most unique formulation because it can be replaced by any other powders. The one that I just showed you, either NARS, light reflecting that is pressed, or any pressed powder by Kiko. 
Nonetheless, guys, when it comes to what do I think about this powder, Paris Star Channel gives a green light to this powder. I think it is a very nice powder. It does a job, but as of today and as, as of year 2023, it is definitely not unique and it can be replaced by other products. Good, guys. Moving on, when it comes to blushes, Carton Box Eleganza Extravaganza. I mean, I'm re probably repeating myself, but the formulation is definitely unique when it comes to powders, when it comes to smoothing finishing powders, when it comes to blushes, when it comes to highlights. It is unique. What is so unique? There you go. There you go. What is so unique about the powders? They give you color, beautiful color. There are smoothing and there are blurring at the same time and especially highlight. You can put highlight and it will not accentuate your texture, which is quite unique. It gives you a beautiful glow and I definitely like it and I definitely enjoy. The one issue, the only one issue that I would like to say would be if you're having a heavy hand, you might have some issues because it is definitely a very pigmented. These palettes, they're definitely very pigmented. So if you have a heavy hand, you might uh, surprise yourself a little bit. Let me just show you very easily a little experiment, okay? So here I'm having a palette and this brush is one of the most gentle brush that I have in my collection. And look what I'm going to do. I'm just going to do this one swipe look what is going to happen see see how it intense can become in just a one swipe you can definitely make a mistake very quickly and then you have to blend it blend it blend it imagine if you're gonna have a heavy hand have a different brush with the different bristles punch it pack it and then you're doomed <laughs> you're over, you're covered with a blush. Nonetheless, the formulation is definitely amazing. It is very soft, as I said, so you can pack it a lot and it is very pigmented. But yeah, Paris Star Channel gives a green light to these blushes. I think they're very nice and very unique, but you have to be, you consider yourself warned to not to be heavy handed because the result is going to be like this. And if I would ha have money to spend, instead of going with the super carton box eleganza extravaganza, <laughs> I would go with something that really speaks to me when it comes to luxury products. And for example, uh, Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Face Palette. This is something that speaks to me more than just this 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 carton box situation right over here. So yeah, that is my own personal opinion. Nonetheless, as I said, the formulation is definitely very unique, smoothing, blurring, giving you a beautiful color without accentuating fine lines and texture. So Paris Star Channel gives a green light to the face palettes. Good, moving now to the, to the eyeshadows. Look at this, the eyeshadows. The first one and the second one. These ones, I would definitely wanted to try the formulation of the eyeshadow to find out what is going on, why these eyes, I cannot open them. <laughs> why these eyeshadows, they are so famous. And now I know why. <laughs> Here they are, 10 very unique eyeshadows. It's because they're very easy to work with and you can achieve in a very quick way these kind of beautiful looks. They blend like a dream, they apply like a dream, their longevity is very good. The only thing again, it is a powdery product, which means it is very soft. If you are once again have a heavy hand, please be very careful, only a teeny tiny dip of the brush will be is, is going to be good enough to blend everything all together do not go heavy-handed because you might not only hurt the pan of the um, uh, of the of the whole palette but then you might hurt yourself by putting too much 
uh, of an eyeshadow. These eyeshadows, they're definitely not very application friendly. You must have some sort of a knowledge to know how to apply it and be very, very gentle when it comes to application. Otherwise, you might you might give yourself a little bit of a surprise, but they're very good. The quality is good. The pigmentation is good. The payoff is good. The longevity is good. So I can definitely confirm the quality of the Pat McGrath eyeshadows. They're, they're very nice. They're really very nice. And Paris Star Channel gives a green light to the eyeshadows. Good. And the last products that I would like to talk about would be the glosses. And allow me just to put a little bit more of the lip gloss. They're very nice, guys. The lip glosses are really very nice. They're having that kind of a um, very yummy, tasty vanilla taste. I absolutely love it. They are not going to stay for a very long time on your lips, but while they are, they give you this kind of a beautiful um, glow. Nonetheless, my personal um, uh, lip gloss would be from a different brand. And guys, that lip gloss would be from Glossier. This is the true gloss that gives you a beautiful shine. And allow me just to, to show you, okay? Allow me just to show you really very quickly. This is the gloss. This is the gloss. This is the gloss. <laughs> I know that I'm repeating it. Not this one. It is a very nice product, but if you're looking for a real gloss that gives you a glossy look, Glossier <laughs> got you covered, at least in my personal opinion. So yes, guys, that would be all when it comes to this test. If I would have to give some sort of my personal opinion to the brand when it comes, Pat McGrath brand, when it comes to products for the face, I would say Paris Star Channel gives an orange light to Pat McGrath Labs. These products, some of them, they're good. Some of them, they're very good. Some of them, they're just correct. Um, and yeah, some of them, they're just a little bit disappointing, should I say. And I suppose my personal issue, and uh, this is the reason why I give Pat McGrath an orange light, is that it's not a very gender inclusive, which is a super shame. If you would watch uh, Pat McGrath Instagram, you would see, main, mainly you would see beautiful, very young uh, female models that are just presenting themselves and their makeup. How about people that are over 40 years old? How about people that are over 50 years old? Six years old. Does it does that mean that they don't fit anymore? They cannot use the Pat McGrath Labs uh, cosmetics. It's not cool. How about genders? We have genders, <laughs> and um, I suppose, if in my opinion, personal opinion, it is not cool when it's only featured by beautiful and young women. So that's why for me, Paris Star Channel gives an orange light to the brand as a whole. Okay, guys, so that would be all for today's episode. And um, before we're going to wrap up this episode, allow me to, um, <laughs> to tell you what I'm planning for the next episode. And ta-da! Okay, the sticker gate. We are diving into the sticker gate and we are diving into the Star Wars collection mini palettes. We're going to test these palettes, try some looks have some fun, but most importantly, basically, we're jumping into second part of this episode, which is going to be an eye looks only and palettes and mothership. We are going to test the mothership and see what is the hype all about uh, the motherships and we're going to test this quality because this part is finished. So the second part is going to be about the eyes. I, I could not possibly squeeze all of this in one episode. That would be probably <laughs> lasted for like three hours. No one would like to watch it. So yeah, the, um, the face uh, part is done. 
please look out for the part with the eyes. And yeah, guys, that would be all for today. Thank you so very much for watching. Thank you so very much for tuning in and celebrating with me diversity that makes us all different, gorgeous and beautiful. Um, it's time to say goodbye. So guys, from Paris with love, see you soon. And as for now, bye-bye.